What's up guys, we're back and I was loud. Uh, for episode uh, five, question mark? Six? Yes. Five? Okay. I think it's five. I think you're right. Uh, so this time we've got a rich and good backstory to go into and then we got kind of a setup into a massive fight. So anyway, uh, I was really excited to see mm. this episode. I think this was one of the Another ones in the Xeno arc that was very important, and uh, we got some really good cameos both at the end uh, uh, and throughout the episode. Yeah, it kind of teased us though, because like uh, we really thought we were going to get some fighting, which I guess technically we we got a little bit of it in this episode. But the main like fight that we're like I guess uh, that we really got teased to it was at the very end. So you know we're still waiting for the big fight, which looks like it's going to be like next, if not all of next episode, which will be cool. Uh, I actually really appreciated that they started off the episode, though, with a little bit of flashback with uh, the crazy man himself that built the city, uh, Daedalus, which I, I can never say that name right, but we've gotten Dados? inklings. Dados? Dados? That's the first way you said that is right, but I cannot recreate that with my it's, lips. It's a Dota item, so. Yeah. Daedalus. Yeah. So. That was crit, boys. <laughs> I'm glad somebody's in the know here with that. It's been a while since I've dived into that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we got that, which I really appreciate because that is something that plays into heavily of the lore of not only the city, but kind of, you know, uh, the revelations of the, the dungeon itself, I guess, in this season. So it was nice that that didn't get cut because I think it is an important uh, aspect to not only uh, Iqlo's Familia and, like, their motivations to exactly what kind of jump-started all this from their perspective, but also just giving a little bit more, uh, I guess, depth to Dix as just a, a villain himself. Um, I guess most of it takes place inside of the ruins of the dungeon city, uh, Liveria, Liveria, I don't know, like in the book it's spelled with an R, in the show it's spelled with an L, I'll take the L on which one it actually is, but, um, yeah, we have the, I, I think, uh, a bunch of, like, good little moments, there's like a really good dialogue scene between Belle and Leto, uh, with, uh, Leto kind of telling him not to, uh, not to get involved. Uh, which I think, you know, just speaks to the bro status of Leto building uh, in here, as we've talked about before. Um, but then, you know, having uh, Bell react into hero mode pretty easily. But there's a really nice scene with Liu that's going to connect later in the next arc, too, that I really like that uh, they showcase there, too. Yeah, um, so it kind of breaks down from, like, the, the novel audience or the anime onlys. It, it may seem like there was a little bit, which there was a little bit of exposition. I like how they did it, where they uh, were ta having you know sim simultaneous conversations mm -hmm. between Dix and like the Iklos Familia with with them. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a cool way to like convey that both sides are now figuring out what's happening mm -hmm. and they have to deal with it. So I really liked that, and I think it's important again for for the rest of the show and for the rest of the season to know. Um, those those parts. Um, overall, I really liked the episode. I think we got to see Belle being more of a hero in this one, which is always good. Mm -hmm. And I think they really uh, captured the essence of what the source material is in regards to the book, especially this part where there weren't really any missing elements. And I felt like even anime only watchers will understand perfectly like what Belle's motivation are is at this time and then what's going to happen in the future. So. Yeah, the other thing I really appreciated that they did with this episode is they didn't cut out the uh, the little bit that we see with the rest of Hestia Familia and what they're doing on the surface. Um, there's some information that was uh, that they found out that uh, is, I think like two episodes ago, I, I brought it up. I don't know if that was when you were gone or if we talked about it last episode, but um, that is the connective tissue to season two because I think it was like in episode four, uh, they did the... Uh, you know, obviously the reveal that we know now uh, connecting to uh, the, the monsterphilia, that being connecting to material in season one. But then this one, we get the connection back to Zanus, which was the information that he uh, revealed to Lily uh, during her time being captured by her own familia. So I like that uh, callback there because it is something that's going to be important information uh, to the back half of this season. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that uh, that was kept in there too because uh, there's been a, a lot of moments where you know, Bell's having to act on his own or kind of question his own things. So it's nice to see, um, you know, them giving some time to the other characters as well, since this is mostly develop. I would say mostly uh, developing uh, Bell's like hero persona, and if uh, if I'm able to word it in such a way, but. Yeah, really did like it though. I think this is the only thing I'm a tad disappointed with is that uh, we didn't get 
uh, much fighting this episode, but I think all of the information they went over was important enough that I still really enjoyed it, and I'm just glad that we got that nice sneak peek at the end of the episode. Oh, man. Big boy's coming. He's coming, and, and stuff's about to go down. <laughs> Shit's it about is, to hit the face. That is true. Uh, uh, the only other thing that I was a little, it was funny to me, is when uh, Liu punches a unicorn. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, aw. I'm like, aw, oh, poor... <laughs> He's just chilling there, man. You punched him. Oh, I forgot. That's the same. That's the same unicorn that breaks off his horn, right? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Around. That's something we'll see later. But uh, yeah, poor unicorn. Yeah, <laughs> punched out first, losing his horn. Second. Um, I do love the uh, the little bit uh, that we, you know, because like even though we didn't get into like the the big bulk of the fighting yet, I do like how they've already kind of set up or at least explained to the audience, uh, you know, kind of the the essence of what a curse is and you know what kind of that means when a a, a person or an adventurer has that type of skill so uh that way we can just get into the action the start of the next episode without any of the extra uh exposition but i really do love uh Dix as a villain i think not only from like a power standpoint but just like his his motivations and just kind of like the you know the the terrible unforeseen circumstances he was dealt uh because of his lineage um, but I'm really, I'm really looking forward to the fight because the curse plays into. I think this is actually the first time we see the curse in the series, right? Like we haven't seen any other ones up to this point, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't so, think so. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be really fun to see uh, play through. I do want, I do want some, even if it's uh, just like Bell talking to himself in his mind, or if it's uh, later after the fact when he's talking to like his own familiar. But I do want that scene in the book where he's uh, being like, "Man, thank you, Wilf. You just saved my life." <laughs> Type of like indirectly, yeah, which you know? which happens many times throughout the series. Yeah. Another thing that we haven't touched on at all, I don't think, is uh, Fells is very present in this episode. We get mm. to see him use his magic maybe for the first or second time. I'm not exactly sure uh, because we have like the side story and stuff. Uh, but yeah, Fells is really killing it here. I was yeah. commenting on his uh, his uh, skeleton hands. Oh uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty cool design, and I really like. I think I'm gonna be excited to see how they. Uh, reveal him here in the end of the season as something dramatic happens. I can't wait to see him with his uh, his thunderclap <laughs> that he's got a And we get to see Ween not having a good time right now. Yeah, no. Um, I actually was... I, I'm not going to say exactly what I thought the image kind of looked like because of spoilers, but there was uh, one moment where I saw like a... Uh, like a red light off yeah, to the side, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, think so, because... No, like, not yet. Because yeah. things happen. I think that it was eyes. kind of like a subtle way of foreshadowing. Yeah, that, for though. sure. But uh, that's uh, that's something that we... Just because of the way they're pacing it, I'm... I think we might get those events at the next, like the end of the next episode. Ooh, but, they may end the next week yeah, but with that event. Which, if that's the case, oof, that's going to be rough. I'm glad how he didn't do that in the books. So... There's a there's an event that happens. Now we'll we'll keep it spoiler free here. And then there's a something else that happens that's next to it. And it would have been very easy for some authors to just leave it on a cliffhanger and then yeah. start the next arc with the second action. But uh, I'm glad they didn't do that. So I wonder if the author is going to you know say, hey, we got to end an episode with mm -hmm. both of these things happening instead of just the first thing. I don't know. I think uh, just judging by how much fighting we got going forward, I would. I kind of want to see only one of those things happening because I feel like that would leave the fights feeling like we got like a whole episode of at least just one big fight or like the best fight from that that source material, which would be I think still volume ten's worth. But I would I would be I'd be fine if they put both of them in there because it is kind of weird knowing that like book eleven material, even though it is in the same arc and it, it's like dealing with the aftermath of stuff that happened in ten, uh, it is. It does. It would feel, I think, kind of weird if we ended volume uh, ten material at the start of the episode, and then like halfway through that episode, we started. And we're back. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, you might be right where it's like it might flow better just from like one episode perspective. But I guess we'll wait and see how that is. I think either way, I'm I'm more hopeful than ever of you know the the source material being executed very well. I think just from what we've seen so far of the season, it's already led me uh, liking it more than the last season. So um, I think no matter what, uh, I'll still really like uh, the way that they've done the season so far. I mean, they always could mess up some things because there's still like a lot of material left for this season because we still have like all of book 11 and part of book 10's not adapted yet, uh, at least in these episodes. So 
I, I don't know. There's a lot that could change, I guess, but I'm just hopeful for going forward at least. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool fights in this next episode, so we'll see. I'm sure the animators probably took months, if not a year, trying to animate this one episode yeah. if it's just fights. So That hands Sorry down them. is going to be the best part of the next episode is uh, seeing our boy come in here. Um, you saw his axe, boy. Let's go. Yeah, and I, I do want... I also hope they don't cut out the, uh, the, the, the little scene of uh, Otter and Freya for uh, the events going on there. But yeah, there's gonna be some explosive stuff happening. I think from this point on, I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of thought last episode we were gonna get like full action, but I, I guess I forgot there was several other stuff they kind of needed to explain or address. So, uh, because we hadn't really fully seen Bell accept his fate of consequences for what it means to joining with the Xenos in battle. So um, I guess seeing that, you know, was good, like uh, in hindsight of how they executed it. but. I guess, uh, you know, at least one or two episodes should be full action. So I'm excited to see those fight scenes play out because we've been waiting a long time to see that animated. And uh, it's just like uh, talking about, uh, you know, the, the new book being delayed, which sad news there. But uh, I'm glad that at least we got the little bit of solace of the, the show still continuing. So it helps. A little bit. I'm yep. still a little crying. I'm a little weepy, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, stay tuned for next week. It's going to be a great episode. This week was a good one, too, so uh, enjoy it uh, mm -hmm. while it lasts because this seasonal episode, this season will end soon. Yep. And uh, then we'll get another drought similar to uh, Overlord Readers. Anyway. Yeah, before you know it. Before right? you know it. But uh, yeah, so we're excited about this episode. Check us out and continue with our episode, episode by episode, by episode series. As we said, uh, episode volume 15 of the light novel has got delayed again still unsure if that date is final so we may do some more speculation but don't yes. worry we do have a freya video up or coming up here pretty quickly <laughs> yes and uh oh that was a doozy so we may have some discussion videos on our way as well several in fact so do check those out i guess until next time guys we'll see you for the next episode as i reach for the camera later addicts bye <laughs>